Let's go check and see if the mail came. <laughs> Old uh, Great Northern RPO. I think that bill that I owe Verizon Wireless is in that pouch. <laughs> This bag has been hanging here for the last hour. All his written mail has been here. The railroad says we don't stop it. So we have to accommodate. We do that by doing what we call catch the mail on the fly. Come on down the other door and I'll show you what happens next. Hi there. Hi. Now, right out there will be Ripman in 20 minutes. Meanwhile, right out this window is a mail frame. Whenever the train goes to an area and doesn't stop, the post office obligates itself to build a mail crane six feet from the train. Okay, that mail crane is simply one post with two arms. These arms, one arm up, one arm down, and they're spring-loaded. Each arm has a little finger on the end, okay? So, <clears throat> They put that there 10 minutes before we go flying through that area, flying meaning anywhere from 65 to 80. Yeah. A person will come from out there. I say out there because I was always going through there on the train. They'll come from out there with a bag like this, special made bag with a ring on each end, really tough, a belt here, a belt here. Um, and they'll have a long pole. They'll take their pole and pull one down one of those spring-loaded arms and hook their bag on just like that. Mm -hmm. Then they'll take the other arm up and hook it like that. Now, as you can see out the window, that bag is waiting there for me to pick it off. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's my job. I'm going to give them this and collect that. At okay. 80 miles an hour. Well, he could kick it up to 80. It'd probably <laughs> be around 70, but it won't make any difference. Can I get you to move up right? Okay, that's, no, that's good right there. I just don't want to hit you. Okay. Now... That crane is way down there over a mile, coming in real fast, right. and it's um, on one side or the other of it, there's a two foot high wooden fence. The fence is there if there's a body of water there or a structure they don't want to get hit repeatedly, they put the fence there. Right. My job and my delight is to hit that fence, okay? <laughs> so, I'm going to do these three things. I'm going to, first of all, the cake is folded up like this, okay? I'm going to look, pull the handle, Roll the bag. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. okay, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to look, pull the handle, and throw the bag straight out. And they get their mail, and you grab your mail. That's it. And wow. then, so, now how, so then it would be on here, and you would be able to just grab it right off of there. That's it. Now hold on, I'm not finished. Oh, now, there are three sounds that you will hear when this happens. Okay? The first sound is the loudest. When this hook hits that bag, it goes BAM! This handle shakes like this. And then I'll let go just like that. It always makes that noise and it always vibrates. And when I found out that letting go would not lose my bag that I just caught, I started letting go. Yeah. Okay? So, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Now remember, we've already thrown our bag out, right? Right. Okay. As we go past that, except we just caught right in that bag, go just like that. We'll stay there all day if we let it. Okay? <laughs> we can't leave it there all day. Why? Because someone be from sorted. there, well, yeah, somebody from there may have sent a letter to the next right. place and we'll be there in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we got to pull this, in, sort the mail, put it in the proper bag because we're stopping down here. Now, I have uh, a question. Okay. Would you find that most of the letters were going to, like, write down the line to people close by or most of them going on to, like, Well, I don't know. You know why? Because I never opened one. Oh. But we, but, well, yeah, we did open them because we had to sort it. But I never paid attention right. to where they were going. It was automatic. just automatic, correct. <laughs> yeah, but some of them probably were going right next door. Yeah. Um, and if there were some business letters in there, they'd probably be going on to Chicago or something. Meanwhile, we pulled this in. We're half a mile down the track. I told you about three sounds. The first sound was the hook hitting the bag. The second sound was when I pulled the hook. Well, by the time we're half a mile away, I hear what sounds like a rifle shot. Pow! Remember that little wooden fence? That means I hit it. That's all that means. The sound catches up with you, but it takes almost a half a mile to catch up with you. And you hear, pow! 
Oh, it's an awesome sound. It was 46 years ago and I can still hear it. Anyway, um, people ask, do you ever miss? They don't mean miss defense, because that's secondary. They mean miss catching that and giving this, okay? Um, you can do this literally blindfolded and not miss. If, if I were down there starting my class, hello, and somebody said, we're going to test you today, we're going to blindfold you, go get your mail, okay? Uh, I would just grab my bag, come down here, turn my back to the bag, pull this handle, throw that out. You can't miss. How can you miss? Okay? You don't want to hit into this, but you, you, you won't miss. Right, you know, right. Doing your the job. train is really the one catching it because it's exactly. measured. Now, there's always a however. Okay? If I'm down there sorting my flats and thinking about home or counting my money or whatever, whatever, I realize where I am. I come running down here, reach for the handle, the bag flies by. That's not a good thing. Quick, grab this and throw it out so you can get half of it right, okay? That person out there is not a happy camper. So, because they're not happy, they're going to make sure I'm not happy. <laughs> they're going to write a You all can come in. we got lots of women here. They're going to write a letter to my boss's boss. Now, I made a ton of money doing this job. My check came in the mail every other Thursday. I never missed a check, and I was with them almost four years. On this particular Thursday, my check came in the mail, and there was a long, rambling letter that said, Lee Nelson, on such and such a date, you delayed the mail. And it listed every step I was to have taken from that table, down here, make the exchange, and back. And it listed a few things that they think I may have done to keep that from happening. And then there was a little blurb on the bottom telling me what's going to happen when I miss again. Mm -hmm. So regarding missing, you don't want to miss. Right. <laughs> However, there's one thing worse than missing. You're down there, you realize where you are, you're running down here, you grab the handle, you pull it, and you hit the bag. Um. And that's a very bad thing. Here's what just happened. You did not tear the bag. These are tough cookies. Right. <clears throat> the bag is just hanging on these little fingers. You knocked it down. It went under the train. Okay? Now the mail car is right behind the engine. And you got a long train following the mail car that's going to go over that bag. So the, that person out there has got to walk five miles down the track picking up raggedy letters that they wrote that they think are on their way to Chicago. No, they're under the train. So that's bad. So if you, if you miss, that's bad. If you hit the bag, that's worse. Real bad. Okay. Now the mail is getting destroyed. Exactly. <laughs> Letters that they wrote. Now, let me tell you one naughty little thing before you go running off. <laughs> don't, mad at, don't be mad at us about this one. This was, this was not our fault. This was Jesse James, Billy the Kid, Butch Cassidy, all those guys. <laughs> what did they do? They robbed trains. So, um, the post office issued surplus World War One 45s. To, all, to every man in the mill. The men start shooting back. No more robberies. The last robbery was 1921 or 23, one of those years. The guns were heavy. The men didn't want to wear them. So they took them all back and gave them Smith & Wesson 38. A small handgun Saturday night special. Right. They'll put a big hole in it. Okay. Um, when I transferred from the post office to the train in 63, I got a letter in the mail saying, come to this office, some office downtown Chicago. I went there, they gave me a box of bullets, a Smith & Wesson, and an address. Go to this address and qualify with this gun. I thought, whoa, guns, I don't need guns. Well, the gun is not to protect the mail, it's to protect you. Why me? Because you got the gun. I said, well, don't give me a gun, you keep the gun. And the job requires a gun. So I went to the address. Anybody from Chicago? Okay. Chicago Post Office, the largest one in the world uh -huh. in the 60s, right? Yeah. Tenth floor. You didn't know what was on the tenth floor, did you? No. And I didn't either because I, I worked there for two years and I could never get past the second floor. Nobody could get past it. On the tenth floor was a firing range. Uh -huh. That's where I learned to use my gun. I don't think the Chicago police knew it was even there. <laughs> but if you're up on the 10th floor, and I got up there a couple of times and looked out the window, there's a big truck going right through the building, okay, on the third floor. Anyway, why did we have guns in the 60s if there hadn't been a robbery since the 20s? Let me tell you. 
My job was to go from Fort, from Chicago to, to Pittsburgh, get off of Pittsburgh, and stay at the Fort Pitt Hotel. Train went on to D.C. The next morning when I got up, the train that left D.C. last night is in Pittsburgh. I get on it, and back in this corner there's 100 to 120 strange looking bags with strange looking locks on them. Different from these locks. The same bags, but they were always new. These bags, if you fill them up with bundles of letters, they're out like this right up to the top, and they weigh 65 pounds. These bags on this side were rectangular all the way up to the top. Strange lock that had a row of four numbers on the side, and if you put your key in and turned it, the number advanced. If it said 4466, six, but you turn your key, it'll say 4467. Four, four, you don't want to do that. I don't know why they gave us keys to the locks and they didn't want us to open them. But what happened? Here's what happened. Um, when I got off the train in Pittsburgh, I never cared where the train went. I knew it was going to end up in D.C. Well, somehow between Pittsburgh and back to Pittsburgh the next day, one of those trains went through Philadelphia. Oh. What's in Philadelphia? The men. The men. It had millions of dollars of cash every day. That's why we had guns. Yeah. And uh, um, the, the D.C. <clears throat> uh, registry clerk wants to go to bed in Pittsburgh. <clears throat> he can't get off the train until he and I count each bag and record each lock number. Then he goes to bed. I work my way to Chicago. None of us 12 guys are worried about these bags because, number one, they're too heavy to move. We don't want to mess with them. Number two, if you got one or two or three and sneaked away with it, you could only have fun for about maybe two and a half to three days. <laughs> then they got you. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'd get to Chicago, and um, the registry clerk from the post office in Chicago would meet me, and we would count each bag and record each lock number. Then he would look at the list we made. They'd have to match. Otherwise, I won't be talking to you all. I'll be talking to myself. Maybe <laughs> so that's basically what was uh, what it was all about. Awesome. You didn't hear that story, right? No. You no. said you've been here lots of times. Yeah, we only heard the whole story. We no, yeah, 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 but you, part. yeah, you would never hear that. Yeah. Now there was one other guy that worked. That used to be on the train, um, but he, that was that was back in the 40s, and he didn't. He wasn't on a long time. I was on to from uh, 64, well, 63. Uh, through part of 66. Johnson was the president when I left. And the reason I left, uh, what, what was that? LBJ. LBJ. Anyway, um, um, rumor had it that Johnson was going to tie the federal employees' uh, retirement up until they were 65. Well, by then I was 29. 65 was forever. Yeah. Well, now I'm 73, so 65 wasn't really forever. <laughs> but anyway, I, I requit. I quit to, to uh, get the money out, plus, um, not that it was so much, but also I was under the, even though I lived in Chicago, I was under the auspices of the Pittsburgh Post Office, and I'd have had to move to Pittsburgh. And having gone to Pittsburgh every other day, I didn't want to move to Pittsburgh. My wife didn't want to move to Pittsburgh. So that's that story. Any questions?